The jury in this civil trial just moments ago finding Donald Trump liable of battery and liable of defamation in connection with claims brought by E. Jean Carroll. Carroll accusing the former president of assaulting her in Bergdorf Goodman's department store back in 1996. Our investigative reporter Aaron Kuturski has been following the case. He's outside the courthouse here for us. And Aaron, what have you learned as far as breaking this down? Liable for what and then not liable for what else? David, this uh, jury reached its verdict in a little bit of under three hours of deliberations after getting the case earlier today, and they found that E. Jean Carroll was battered and defamed by former President Trump. Interestingly, David, the jury did not find that Carroll proved by a preponderance of evidence that Trump actually raped her. However, they did find a lesser degree of battery, finding that Trump sexually abused E. Jean Carroll in that department store in the mid-1990s. And for that, they awarded $2 million in compensatory damages. Another and uh, more damages were awarded for defamation. They found that Trump did defame Carroll in the form of a social media statement from October of 2022 in which he said that Carroll was not his type in which he called her claim a, a hoax and a con job. And for that, the jury awarded another uh, $2 million in compensatory damages uh, all told. So it's a, a real win for E. Jean Carroll. She was seated between her two attorneys, Sean Crowley and Roberta Kaplan, clutching their hands, their arms around her, uh, a satisfied smile on her face. And behind her, the defense attorney for former President Trump, who was not here, he did not show up to this trial, but his defense attorney, Joe Tacopina, sat back in his seat in defeat. Part of the story, Aaron, as you know, for so much time here, E. Jean Carroll waited to bring this case forward. Uh, years, in fact, along the way, publicly, the former president saying that E. Jean Carroll uh, was not his type. That's part of what this defamation, uh, part of this trial was. Uh, Aaron, stick with us here because I want to play for the people at home what many believe was a key part of this civil trial. As you heard Aaron point out there, the former president deciding not to show up uh, to testify at this trial in front of these jurors. Instead, what was shown then was videotaped deposition taken last fall, and he's actually shown in part of that deposition looking at a photo and then mistaking E. Jean Carroll for his ex-wife, saying that's Marla, Marla Maples, of course. Uh, again, this came after the president had said publicly about E. Jean Carroll that she's not my type. That was his uh, defense, at least publicly, and then confusing her in a photograph from years ago uh, with Marla Maples. Here was the moment. Take a listen. I don't even know who the woman, let's say, I don't know who, it's Marla. You're saying Marla's in this photo? That's Marla, yeah. That's, that's my wife. Which woman are you pointing to? No. Here. Uh, oh, is that? The oh, person okay. you just pointed to was oh, Eugene Carroll. Who is that? Who is this? And the person, the woman on the right is your then wife, I don't know. Mom? This was the picture. Um, I assume that's John Johnson. Is that that's Carol? Because it's very blurry. That was the former president in the deposition that was relied upon uh, heavily by E. Jean Carroll's attorneys in this civil trial. Again, the former president found uh, liable moments ago of battery, liable of defamation in this case. Uh, and Aaron, you reported moments ago on the damages decided by this jury. The jury awarded $2 million in compensatory damages for the battery, another $20,000 in punitive damages for the battery, David. And then on defamation, the jury awarded a $1 million in uh, reputational repair, $1.7 million for, for that reputational repair, a $1 million in, in compensatory damages, $280,000 in, in punitive damages. So all told, we're looking at about a $5 million award for E. Jean Carroll after she brought claims against former President Trump. David, that moment you played where he confused his accuser for his ex-wife Marla Maples may have been a key moment for the jury because the plaintiff's attorney said that it proved that E. Jean Carroll was exactly Donald Trump's type. And the jury found that the, the statement, she's not my type, was false and trump knew it that was part of the verdict form and maybe that's what the the, the jury 
uh, decided when they found in favor of Carol for, for defamation, but there were other moments, too, that were played for the jury, including the Access Hollywood tape in which former President Trump uh, says that he, stars like him, can, can kiss and grab women without consent. And Carol's attorney said that's exactly what happened to her and to two other women who testified here during the course of the trial that they too were sexually assaulted by former President Trump even though he had denied it. So E. Jean Carroll walks away with a full victory on her battery and defamation claims. And David, more than two dozen women have come forward to accuse Trump of sexual misconduct over the years, but Carol's claims were the first to make it into court here, the first before a jury, and she's now successful. And Aaron, as you dissected there, that key piece of testimony, another question going forward will be this uh, sort of strategic tactical decision for the former president not to show up in that courtroom and whether or not that played heavily with jurors who took that into account that he wasn't willing to testify in that courtroom. E. Jean Carroll's attorneys called him out and, and said that Trump had every opportunity to come here and testify in his own defense, but he didn't do it didn't do it, the attorney said, didn't come to court, didn't look you, the jury, in the eye and say, I didn't do it. And the defense had an answer for that. Joe Tacopino, the defense attorney, said, why would Trump come here? He said that the entire story was completely made up, an unbelievable work of fiction ripped from an episode of Law and Order SVU back in 2012 when a woman is seen being raped at the very same department store. And he accused E. Jean Carroll uh, of making up her claim whole cloth. She couldn't remember a date. So the defense attorney asked, what was I supposed to ask Trump if he did show up here? Where were you on some unspecified date 27 or 28 years ago? He said there was no point in having Trump testify because there was no way to establish an alibi. Aaron Katursky, our investigative reporter. Aaron, uh, thank you for that. He's been covering this case every step of the way. One more question on this before we return you to regular programming. I want to bring in a member of our investigative team, Catherine Falders, as well. And Catherine, again, you heard Aaron and I talking about this decision not to testify. You know, that can be read any number of ways by members uh, of the jury. Uh, his team, the former president's team, saying he didn't need to because of the they believed the the truthfulness of the story being brought forward by E. Jean Carroll. That obviously is going to be a tactical sort of decision that is uh, debated moving forward, given the fact that this jury found the former president liable of battery, liable of defamation, well more than a million uh, in damages now. And Catherine, the case is completely different from what Jack Smith is investigating the special counsel on the federal level and what state authorities, uh, the prosecutor in Georgia, is looking at and moving forward because the former president faces a number of legal challenges ahead. Again, completely different, these cases. But again, this is going to shine a real spotlight on legal strategy when it comes to the former president's uh, team of advisors and whether or not um, making an appearance, uh, being more sort of publicly willing to be part of the legal process, whether or not that's going to be a calculation moving forward here. Yeah, and this has always been a discussion with Trump and his legal team behind the scenes, even dating back to when he was in the White House. Does he uh, make an appearance before the special counsel? Does he uh, talk to investigators? Yes, these are completely different, David. But what this shows us is this window into this pattern of behavior by the former president when he is confronted with the court system, whether it be uh, civil or criminal in any way. It gives a window into his reaction and his behavior when he's uh, posting on his social media app, Truth Social, the judge in this case case, for example, had to warn him against that. He didn't show up. So what this is telling us and what we're seeing here is this can only go so far. Trump's claims, his comments publicly on these various different investigations, it can only go so far, of course, when he's confronted by a jury of his own peers, David. Catherine Falders with our investigative team as well. Catherine, thank you as always. Again, the breaking news at this hour, a jury here in New York finding former President Trump liable in the E. Jean Carroll rape and defamation case, not of the rape, but liable of battery and libel of defamation and as you heard Aaron Katursky report well more than a million uh, in damages we're gonna break this all down for you we'll also have any reaction from former President Trump if and when it comes in later from our team on World News tonight and of course reaction from E. Jean Carroll expected uh, at any moment again our special coverage tonight on World News tonight libel of battery defamation former President Trump in the case brought against him by